Hi and welcome back to part two of common source amplifiers. Um, in part one, we intuitively designed a common source amplifier that looked like this. And we also came up with the small signal model that looks like this. Um, I'm assuming that uh, you're comfortable with these designs and we will go ahead and derive a few equations for these um, designs. So let's first uh, write down a very simple equation based on the Kirchhoff's law, voltage law, for this part of the circuit. V out is equal to VDD minus suppose, suppose there is a current ID. ID RD. This is an important equation. Just remember it. And we'll come back to that till later. Okay. Um, now let's look at how V out changes in a graph according, I mean, ba I mean against V in. So say we increase V in from zero volts. Okay, uh, let me draw, the, draw it for you again here so that it's uh, easy for us to analyze. And uh, here's VDD, okay. So we're increasing V in from zero, slowly increasing. Okay, so say we have 0.1 volt. Will there be any conduction? Will the MOSFET turn on? No. 0.2 it won't turn on, 0.3 it won't turn on. So when the MOSFET doesn't turn on, there's zero current in the circuit, right? If there's zero current, the resistance is not going to be effective because resistance is an obstruction to current, nothing else. So if there's no current, a resistance is as good as a plain short circuit. Okay? So when V in is increasing from zero volts and above initially because the MOSFET doesn't turn on your V out is directly connected to VDD so your V out is going to be equal to VDD for how much time let's say we take it above 0 0.5 0 0.6 volts and 0 0.7 volts suppose 0 0.7 is the V threshold when we touch V threshold and go slightly above that, maybe 0.8 volts, we're going to start a current through the MOSFET, right? So now let's look at how, um, in, in what region of operation this MOSFET is. Our condition for saturation, always remember this statement, it's very important. For saturation, the most necessary condition, the necessary condition is that VDS be greater than or equal to VGS minus VTH. Okay, what does that mean? Here, source is anyway grounded, so VD minus VS greater than or equal to VG minus VS minus VTH. Okay, source is anyway grounded, so it's zero, it can go. So the condition here for us, for this circuit to remain in saturation is that VD should be greater than or equal to VG minus VTH. For our circuit, what is VD? VD is connected to, VD is the output voltage, right? So V out should be greater than or equal to VG is V in minus VTH. All right, this is the necessary condition for our circuit to be in saturation. When an amplifier, I mean, when a transistor is in saturation, it acts as an amplifier. If it's not in saturation, it's going to be a switch. When not in saturation, okay? But when in saturation, it's going to be an amplifier. Because we're studying amplifiers, we would love for our 
transistor to be in saturation. All right. So the necessary condition is V out is has, has to be greater than V in minus V T H. Let's look at that in the circuit here. In the graph shown here, whoops, I don't know what the problem with the video is. Okay, um, the V out right now is at VDD, that's the highest voltage level possible in the circuit. It's obviously greater than V in minus VTH. That means the MOSFET turns on in saturation when you're increasing V in. Okay, that understood. Let's, uh, let's write that here. So till VTH, it's VDD. After VTH, what happens? Let's look at that. So V out is VDD minus ID RD. And we know the equation of ID in saturation. What is it? It is VDD. I mean, this equation becomes VDD minus RD times half of mu n times C ox times W over L times VGS minus VTH, the whole square. Here, uh, instead of VGS, it's V in. Okay? So that's the equation for ID. Now, increasing V in, what happens to V out? Increasing V in will increase this term, right? Increasing this term would result in the entire term decreasing because VDD minus a greater term would give you lesser. So, on increasing V in, your V out is going to reduce. That said, let's plot that here. And it's going to reduce in a curve, not in a straight line. Why? Because this is a second power, right? It's a square. So it doesn't follow the straight line curve. So it has kind of a curve here. But hold on again. How long is that going to drop like that? How long are we going to be in saturation? We have seen here that the most important condition for us to be in saturation is that V out be greater than V in minus VTH, correct? So here V in is increasing continuously. So at one point in time, V out is going to be equal to V in minus VTH. And a slight increase further than that is going to put V out to be lesser than V in minus VTH. Okay, so this point, let's call it A. That's the that's the edge of saturation. Once V out goes below V in minus VTH, our transistor is going to go into triode region and it's going to no more amplify. Okay, so it'd be really great if we could plot that here. So I'm going to, I'm going to wait till the graph returns to its normal state. I don't know what the problem is. Well, let me draw this here again. So this is point A where V out is equal to V in minus VTH. Okay, and beyond that it goes into triode and it steeply drops. Okay, in the triode region our amplifier cannot amplify. It, it, it is no more an amplifier, so we're not using that. So, and here the V out is going to be copying just VDD, so it's not useful. So the useful part of the entire circuit is going to be within these two points, within VTH and A. All right. Okay. That said, let's derive the gain of the circuit. What is the gain of a circuit? It's it's denoted by A, uh, gain of an amplifier, sorry. It's denoted by A, V meaning voltage, the voltage gain. Gain of any circuit is going to be output over input, correct? Likewise, the voltage gain of a, an amplifier is going to be V out over V in. So, just like transconductance, the change in V out based on the change in V in would be the gain of the circuit. Okay, now that we have the equation for V out written really clear, VDD minus half mu n C ox RD 
W over L V G S oh sorry V N minus V T H the whole squared. Let's take the differential with respect to V N. What do you get? You get a zero here and you have a the two from here comes here, so it gets cancelled. You have mu n c ox r d w over l v n minus v t h. From our transconductance lecture, we know that this is. Oh, let me write that down again. R d times mu n times c ox times w over l times v n minus v t h. We know that this is equal to g m or the transconductance. So it is safe to say that the voltage gain of the amplifier, the common source amplifier, is GM times RD. How difficult was that? But this result is one of the most important results possible in analog circuits. You just have to remember it. And it's, it's very good to know how to derive it so that you're not confused at any point in time and you don't have to buy heart these things, but um, I would advise that you remember this result. It's very useful in analog circuits all the time it's used. Okay, well, here's something interesting I want to show you. Let's go here and I'll show you something. If you look at the... Uh, small signal model of this you have a uh, plus minus v in small signal model is gm times v in this is the drain and this is rd okay now suppose there is a change in input voltage say delta v in that translates to a change in current. How much is would that be? It would be GM times delta V in, right? This change in current is going to produce a change in the voltage here. This is V out. Okay? Equivalent to how much? Equivalent to the current times the resistance. How? Because V equals IR, that's all, right? So this is the I and R is RD, correct? So the change in output voltage because of the change in input voltage is uh, GM times VN times RD, change in VN times RD. And it would be a negative sign because the current is flowing away from that um, terminal. So here, if you have V out over delta V in, it's going to be equal to minus GM times RD, which is, equi which is equal to the voltage gain. Instead of having all those long equations, you got it off the small signal model directly. That's the beauty of um, amplifier design. So yeah. So just one last point I wanted to make is that um, though we now know AV equals GM times RD, negative, and GM is given by mu n c ox W over L V G V N minus VTH, there are terms in this equation, um, in this in this expression that affect very badly the gain of the amplifier if there are changes. For example, this is the input voltage. If you change this even the slightest of, if you bring in a very slight change, there's going to be an RD times that change in your gain of the device, which is not desirable. So we will, in the next lectures, look at how we can eliminate that effect. All right? But for now, just have your AV equals minus GM times RD and enjoy. You have finally cracked the problem of the common source amplifiers. You designed it. You derived the equation for the gain of the amplifier. There's nothing else to do. 
just go enjoy. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.